Hey everyone, it's Plagin here. How are you doing? So, it's been a bit since we've talked about my game, the Gunmancer Isekai, one that I've been working on. Previously, I had showed you guys a little bit of the uh, random generation of how the maps worked and all that. Didn't really have too much visually to show you, uh, mainly because it was, you know, just me showing off that little bit that I had worked on. But I actually have some assets for the game now, and I figured. Let's do another showcase of it, you know, kind of show you what's going on, what I plan to do, all that good jazz, and uh, go from there. Uh, I do want to mention, before we get into that, though, with the random generation, I think when I had recorded that last video, we were at around 50% of the time the generation would generate a random map versus a pre-built map. Um... And I actually got that down to like, I think it's like 10% now uh, by doing some other extra checks every once in a while. So now we should be good to go. And while going through and you know testing it, it, it's actually quite reliably not a random map. But I have also since made some extra maps that are, if it is a hand-built map, it will have like some variety. It's not just going to be the same one over and over. Regardless, it shouldn't happen too much, so let's go ahead and switch over to the whole screen monitor, as you can see here. We're still in the Unity editor, you can see by the uh, thing at the top here, and the fact that my uh, Windows taskbar is showing up there. But this is the, the title screen here, where you can choose new game, load, all that. If we go into settings, we can see that I've added a little bit. I haven't put a background on this, it looks like, but that's fine. I've uh, changed it so, I think before you may have seen it where I had the keybinds showing up here, but I actually added a keybind here to actually show this stuff. You can't edit it yet, I'm not sure if I'll implement that feature or not. It depends upon if I figure out how to do it properly and make it actually smooth and, and work. So you can't really click on any of these, it doesn't do anything. You can go close though. You have these little sliders for the music and stuff, and whenever you hit apply and close it'll apply it. And go from there. You also can turn on and off the head bob or the MP HP bars, which we'll get to in a moment. So let's just hit apply and close, and we'll just click continue. That way we can skip the tutorial, which I haven't really done much with. So here is the uh, Adventure Guild Tavern. It's basically where you'll come and uh, spawn at, I guess, after you finish a mission. Uh, since you'll have to turn it in, you'll come up to the guild receptionist, you'll talk to her, turn in the mission, and then you can go and get another one from the quest board. But if uh, I don't know if I showed previously the uh, way it looked before, how it was just random walls, and I don't think I had textures on them at the time. I might have had some testing textures, but these are the actual textures I'm planning on using. You can see we have some uh, banners around the walls, we have some crates... We have plenty of tables and chairs for the uh, adventurers who would be doing stuff in here. We have some uh, crossed mage staffs. We have a sword down there. We have a sword and an axe. We have a couple shields. We have some lovely bookcases here. Look behind the counter. Even the uh, receptionist has some stuff back there, books, and there's some potions over on that side, which she can sell you and whatnot. And you can actually get behind the counter if you go over like this and you can get on top of the barrel which you shouldn't actually be able to do because if you get behind the counter you can't get out because you can't get through this little space like this you'll, you'll be stuck unfortunately and uh well i guess you can use the huh apparently you can walk over the receptionist in order to get out didn't know that but that's cool but i'll, I'll edit all that we're still in very very early alpha so there's not a whole lot of uh bug fixing that's been going on. If I found a bug, I've just been like, okay, whatever, note it down and I'll fix it later. Because, like I said, still very early alpha. I have not really put much time into bug fixing. It's just been adding textures, uh, coding new elements to the game and all that good jazz. But yeah, you can see kind of all these things. And how these textures work is with the exception of like the, the things that don't really have a, a solid background to them, like the table and the chairs and the barrels. Um, things that are like turning when I'm moving and whatnot. And we can actually go into settings and turn off head bob, hit apply, and then we can unpause it. And well, now the HP bars are there, so we can remove them real quick. So, like I said, bugs. You're not supposed to have the HP bars visible in the uh, thing here. 
So I think that's because there's an audio clip that's supposed to be playing that is not. So anyway, now you can see we're not really having that head bob going on. So you can turn it on and off. Um, I think the head bob adds a little something to it though when you're moving around. It actually makes it look more like you're walking. But yeah, you can kind of see that the stuff rotates to face me uh, whenever I'm doing stuff. Especially if the receptionist and stuff, she'll always turn to face you. And we have this fake door here which doesn't really let you go anywhere. These doors actually open if I were to have coded it to open. Uh, I do have like an animation for them to open and you know, let you out. Uh, the plan for that is if I get everything else in the game that I want, mainly the main story is good, all that good stuff down, and if I have you know, spare time, resources, money, all that, I want to build an actual like town center kind of thing outside where rather than having the receptionist where if you talk to her, you can open the shop and buy health, mana, armor, and whatnot. Uh, rather than that, you're going to go outside, go to a like general store who will sell you that stuff. Um, I also want to have like an inn out there you can go to that you'll have to go to to save. Um, because right now you can go to the receptionist and, and save the game. Uh, but I kind of want to like make it feel more like an RPG or like a, uh, like a Dungeons and Dragons story where you don't just come to the receptionist at a guild and be like, yeah, I'm going to you know rest here. You, uh, you go to an inn and you rest and whatnot, or you go to like a trader and you trade and, and whatnot. And I also want, if I'm doing that, I want to add like an ability for the player to buy property in the city. And you'll basically just go down a like path that'll then teleport you to inside your house. So it's not like a house you can go in and out of because uh, I want you to be able to buy different types of houses, like a small house a big house um, and those things will like add do different things so, like if you rest in your house rather than an inn for example you'll gain like plus five uh, health of the next mission you go out on uh, if you get a better house you'll get like plus 10 uh, health and whatnot so it gives you like a reason to do that and it also allows you to uh, decorate the house where like if you uh, talk to a trader in the place you can buy like a different bed or stuff like that um, even the plan is to have like a trophy room inside the house that you can get like slime or like wolf trophies or like monster trophies basically of monsters you've killed they'll have like a rare chance of dropping one and you can take that mount it in the room and it'll give you like a bonus to like uh defense or strength or something like that right depending upon what the, the monster is you know so whenever you rest there you'll get that bonus but if you choose to just go directly back into a mission and not actually uh you know rest at home after a previous mission you won't get that extra added bonus so kind of encourage you to be like okay so i went on a mission i'm gonna go and rest for the day come back tomorrow and do another quest essentially uh but that's how that area would work if i get it implemented again not guaranteed um it's just if i happen to have enough money for that and enough time for that i will add that stuff but for now it's just going to be this adventurer guild where you can talk to the receptionist, she'll, you know, talk to you about taking a quest and all that. You can trade with her, save there, all that good jazz. Then we have the two quest boards. The quest board on the left is the main quest board. It'll allow you to do various things. So if we come over here and click it, we can see we have this lovely little uh, page pop up. And by the way, for the, the, the paper here and then the buttons and the backgrounds you're seeing for like the user interface, I did those. I was originally going to pay someone to do them. I think it was like $250 I was going to pay them. Uh, but like, after the first deadline for them to like deliver the stuff came by, they kept extending the deadline without showing me anything. And like a month later, they like stopped asking for a deadline extension. And I was like, hey guy, what's going on? And they were like, Oh yeah, I've just been you know, sick and I'm back now and I'm working on stuff. So I was like, okay, whatever. Maybe I'll give them a little more time. And then another like week or two goes by and I was like, uh, hey, uh, anything happening? Can you at least like show me something of what's going on? And then they just never replied. And then another week later, I refunded that amount. And then I was like, I'm just going to make my own backgrounds for this for now. Just so I at least have something to look at that's not a, a black background with white buttons on it right um but anyway let me know what you think about these backgrounds um 
I'd like to know, do they look okay? Or do I actually need something a little more professional? Because I, like I said, I just made these myself. So as you can see, this is the status screen where you can choose your stats and kind of get an explanation of what they do. Uh, you can go to your gun management screen where if you click on the gun, it'll tell you the, the range, the damage, uh, all that good jazz of what the, the weapon does. And you can even unlock more if you had gun points. So uh, that's kind of a thing you can do. So if I wanted to click on this one, for example, um, I don't have an image of it yet, but this would unlock the pistol. Normally it'd be like a image of a pistol here on, this, on its side. So you can see what it was. Or you can upgrade to the next melee level, which would be claws instead of just brass knuckles. Um, and then... Once you unlock the pistols, the rifles unlock, and once you unlock a rifle, the shotguns unlock, and once you unlock a shotgun, the sniper unlocks. After the sniper, it's a rocket, and then it's magic, and magic is uh, kind of the wild card among these, because normally it starts out with like a basic weapon, gets stronger, gets stronger, but it's kind of like the same damage, it's just the fire rate and stuff differs, but with magic, the fire rate, the damage, and the cost of mana differs between every single weapon um it's kind of interesting that's kind of what that is and then in settings here i actually have a background for this one like i said but all that stuff also let me know if this looks fine as well to you um because again i just did it myself including the the red x here it's it's just a very simple x thing and whatnot so yeah anyway like i was saying we come into here you can see this is the main quest so the description has a little bit more flavor to it here. Uh, the slimes, or the, the forest, are getting overran with slimes lately. Makes it hard to safely forage for herbs. Can someone take care of them? And you can accept the quest, which I don't have the level made for that, so we're not gonna accept it. But over here, to our side quests, if we come into this, we can see that the first one is slimes being the monsters. It asks you to please exterminate some slimes in the forest. We can then go to the Next quest, which says horned rabbits, just collect some meat from horned rabbits, collect some meat from wild boars, thin out the number of wolves, and that's basically all the quests that are in the, the F tier side quest thing. Now the side quests, they don't contribute to the main story at all. They just give you a flat reward and allow you to gain more experience to level up so that you can get more guns or allocate stat points, that kind of thing. So if you get stuck on the main missions, you can come back and do this. You can also select what rank you want to do, but since we haven't progressed the main story to the point where we unlock uh, E rank, it's E, I had to think for a second there, but once we unlock E rank with the main quest, we can unlock the E rank for the side quests as well. And each rank sends you to a different location, so for right now, we're going to forests, for example. Um, the next area unlocks is going to be caves. And then after caves, we unlock... I think it is... I don't remember offhand. I think it might be a labyrinth. Then after the labyrinth, it's a volcano or ruins. And then after that, it's either the volcano or ruins, whichever one was, wasn't before. And then so on and so forth until we get to the end, which... Uh, Basically, the goal for the game is to defeat the Demon Lord, or there's a choice you can make uh, in the later in the later levels, where you can uh, choose to either fight uh, the Demon Lord, or you can side with the demons and uh, attack the humans instead. Very fun. So anyway, let's go ahead and look at our quest. So this is the kind of thing we want to see. Also... Uh, Oops, didn't want to do that. I think I might have just messed some stuff up here. There we go. We're back. Okay. Like I said, there's still bugs in here. But if we go into settings, we can turn the music up a little bit. I actually have music made. So here's the music for the, the house. Got the kind of metal feel to it. Or I guess the town. But uh, it's kind of subdued. Not as intense as it would be if you're you know, fighting monsters. It's just kind of... Yeah, so now if we accept the quest, we'll have the loading screen come up, which is you know, just the logo and some about how to save things. Just a placeholder for now. Then we're in the actual mission here, and we can go ahead and bop some slimes. 
the hitboxes are still not like exactly what they're gonna be. I'm not sure what I want to do here. Oh look, there's move there, but this is the level. These are the assets that I got from the, the artist that I have laid out. And I'll explain a little bit more of those after we get rid of some slimes. So there we go. So coming back here, I'm gonna lower the volume of the music. That way we can talk a little bit better and get rid of the uh up bars as well. So as you can see, we have uh, basically a, a basic grass texture at the bottom for the grassy floor. And then that is added uh, to add some extra like depth and stuff. So it's not just a flat ground. We have, you know, rocks, we have tall grass, we have uh, bushes that are just kind of lying around. And then we have back here a, a, a treasure chest kind of thing. This is actually a corpse of like an adventurer. And you can tell it has loot in it because it has a bag there. So if we come up here, hit F, uh, well, I get an error because there's a uh, uh, collection was modified, a numerator operation may not execute, something like that. But if we hit it F again, it actually spits out an item here, and it is uh, mana, which we can't pick up because we already have mana. Um, it does give you a uh, list of different things. Like if your luck is high enough, you can get multiple items out of a treasure chest, depending upon what it has and whatnot. And it's also supposed to change the sprite from having a bag to having like an open bag there as well. But those are kind of like around certain areas. But as you can see, we also have a, uh, a background here. You can't go into, it's just kind of there. So uh, it, it adds like depth to the, the forest, right? And then we have these trees, which you can actually run into. Um, they're supposed to act as like a barrier to prevent you from hitting the wall. Uh, but sometimes since I haven't placed them exactly, uh, to prevent the player from going through, they will and sometimes hit the wall there. But yeah, so it, it's kind of a repeatable texture that goes around the entire like uh, zone of the area. And then we have the trees that rotate to kind of face you to add that like 3D look to it, right? And then we can go around and explore each of these little tiles. You can probably tell they're like uh, square tiles each area and uh, they randomly generate. We can just go ahead and punch our little guys here. And you can see this, this tree is a little bit further in to add a little more texture. Same with the ones over here. These ones add a little more like, a, so it's not just like a being outlined by the forest. It's actually like some trees are, you know, further in than others and, and stuff like that and all that good jazz. So it adds a little bit more depth and kind of isn't just, you know, squares going around. So we can keep punching things. Punching, punching them. Yeah. As you can see in the, uh, well, you can't see in the bottom right, but I have some numbers showing my health and armor and stuff like that, and I've taken some hits here. Once the slime's getting close, you know, whenever you see the red X pop up, that is the slimes trying to attack me uh, because they're in range to attack. I do not have an attack animation for them yet, unfortunately. That's just kind of how it goes. We can keep battling slimes. Uh, right here, there should actually be an opening here. Unfortunately, some of the random generation, it's still buggy sometimes, uh, which means that it puts up a, a wall here because there's another piece that got put over there. And, and on the other side of these uh, walls, there's nothing, so... Uh, if I were to put trees on the other side of them, they would conflict with the trees on the other thing, and it would just be a, a mess. So that's why that sometimes happens. It shouldn't be too often, unfortunately. It does happen sometimes, but uh, that's just kind of how things go for now. And also the slimes, they uh, they won't really come after you if they see you. Like, for example, they can see you now, but there's, you know, they're really going to do. Um, but once you get close enough to a point you're encroaching on their territory, which I probably need to make a little bit bigger. You know, again, still very early access. I haven't been fine tweaking anything yet. Um, they'll actually start to chase after you. And if we get close enough, we can actually pull him like all the way over here. As long as we stay like in his area, he'll just keep coming at us and being like, Rah. I do need to work on the AI and their movement a little bit more. Um, going from there. As you can see, I have various tiles that have like loot bags in them. 
they're not supposed to come and like come up this often but uh that's just kind of where they are and then if we come over here we can see another loot bag and a dead end and the main thing is the exit which if we come over here we can see the exit right there let's just check these corners okay and if we come over here this is the exit so if we approach this it'll teleport us back to town and finish the mission we don't necessarily have to kill all the slimes um, in order to progress i have made some uh in the, in the prefab levels that i have made in case like uh the random generation doesn't happen correctly i do have a barrier that i put up that prevents you from leaving until you've killed the slimes like all of them or whatever monster it is for example uh and that's just you know how that goes right so once we come out here, we go through here, we trigger the uh, the loading screen, very quickly loads us into here because there's not as much to load since we're not randomly generating a map, right? We're just loading this particular map that doesn't have any extra randomness into it, right? And then we can come up to the uh, person here and she says, oh, welcome back. I'm glad you arrived safe and sound. Would have hated if anything happened yet. Now let's see. Ah, this quest. The reward comes to 50 gold. Need any health or mana potions, armor, or want to sell some monster cores, just let me know. And then we're done, we can go and grab another one, or we can come and talk to her and, you know, buy some stuff, which I don't think these actually do anything. Um, I should be able to buy one armor, I think, but uh, I don't know why it's not letting me right now. I'll have to, again, look at that and see why it's not letting me do it. I probably just have, like, a less than or equal to sign rather than an equal to sign or something like that but anyway we can come back over here and we can select another level if i want to so let's go ahead and accept this one why not that's gonna take us a moment sometimes it's very quickly sometimes it takes a little longer it depends upon how much the random generator has to actually think but if we can explore this level we'll see it's, it's fairly different now And we're going a little bit further to the, uh, I would say, west right now. We're going over here. We can see the exit there. And we can leave once again. Now, right now, I'm using a, a system where uh, we have 10 primary tiles. And if we actually, I'm going to pause this. I'm gonna throw this guy over here. I'm gonna move this guy over here, and then we're gonna go back over. Excuse me, no, this one over here. So let's try this one more time. You can see some errors that had popped up here. I'll just kind of show you the uh, thing here. So I might have mentioned this in the random one where we were doing it, but nice to see kind of updated stuff like that. So if we Open this up, go to our scene viewer rather than our uh, game viewer, and we click on my player to get closer to the map right away. So we can see how the map has been created. So here it starts us with our entrance where the player spawns. And then if we go up a little bit further like this to get a good view of the whole thing. It chooses a list of random uh, tiles. And these can be anything from a one by one hall, a T intersection, a corner, what have you. And so it'll place the first tile that's randomly done, then the next one, 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 next one, next one, next one. Next one. And then we place 10 tiles because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we're only looking to place 10 tiles currently. Once 10 tiles gets placed, we then place the last tile here. And since we have these areas that if we did not have this one, for example, like if this one was out of here, we would just have a, an area that leads out into the void. What we need to do is any place that has an area that can have another bit of uh, room there, which is this one and this one, that one and that one, not that one, that one here. Um, what these do is they just kind of put on an end cap, which is like a dead end area. And that's just sort of how it goes. Also, if we click on one of these, what did I do? So if you look at this, this is the nav mesh, this blue area. And this is the area that the enemies can walk on. 
and they are allowed to walk on anywhere that has this sort of blue nav mesh. So they're supposed to follow a uh, player on this based upon that. And it was such a pain to get uh, the grass and the um, bushes and all that stuff to have uh, the blueness underneath them. Because if it's an area that they're not supposed to walk on, it has nothing on it, right? Like the trees. And the trees also had like a wonky hitbox, so I had to like figure out how to move all that stuff and whatnot, and it was just a, a huge pain. But uh, yeah, that's kind of how the randomness and the graphics of everything look now. If we actually go into the project folder, and we go into my, is it the F rank object? Yeah, so we can kind of see here at the bottom what all of the different pieces are. We can kind of go up a little bit further here. So all of these are the different pathways, those initial 10 like tiles that are gonna be placed. So let's open this one up, for example. If we go into scene viewer, we can see this is just what it is. It's just a, a one by one tile here. If we touch the ground, it's actually like a scale of four by four. Um, just to kind of give us enough space to do things. We have a corner piece here. We have another hallway here. We have a, a T intersection here. There's also four ways which are open every single direction and whatnot. We actually saw some of those when we were playing. And then we have the uh, the pre-built maps. Like I call them, I call them panic maps, right? So the first one, kind of small. You start down uh, here, I think, at the spawn. And then you can go you know, around here and then the exit's over here. So pretty straightforward. You can just go up, over, up, over. It was the first one that I made and I was just like, yeah, let's just throw this together real quick, right? The second panic level, I did something a little more with it. And as you can see, you start the spawn and you have a hall leading down here. And you have a, a dead end in a pathway there. But then you have this area here, which goes in a loop right around there, and then you also have a dead end over here, but the exit is over here. However, it is blocked by this, what I call a mob wall. And this will not let the player pass by it. They have to kill all the monsters in these tiles. So if we actually type spawn here, and we tag all these enemy spawners, we can see we have 33 enemies in this map that have to be killed before this mob wall disappears. When it does, the player and now pass through there and get to the exit. It's actually transparent. If you look through here, you can kind of see what's behind it. And then uh, this is just the, the logo of it. So, nice. We have the, the third map that I made, which is a little bit bigger still. I didn't want them all to be too big or too small, so I kind of made a variety. Again, you spawn down in this tile here. And then I made this one so you have three different directions to go in. You can go up, left, down, or right. You take the up path, you go on a very uh, linear path, the exit, but it's a mob wall. So you'll have to go backtrack down another tunnel to kill everything in there. Then you choose the final way to get back to the mob wall. And at that point, everything should be dead and you can leave. So you kind of have to go through it three times, but you choose each path once, essentially. And I think it's very neat and kind of cool. Also, I could probably shoot this down here so it's easier for you guys to see, but there it is. So there's a couple dead ends here, 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 and here, and the middle path is fairly linear. Why not? I could have put some stuff here and there, but I was like, eh, screw it. It's long enough with a twisty turny one. And I kind of wanted to make the middle one a little bit symmetrical. You can kind of see it, how it uh, goes uh, down and left, that, that, and then boop, 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 like that. Uh, next, we have this one which uh, I kind of wanted to make it, if we look at the spawn, so you come up here and you have a choice of where to go. I wanted to make it a little bit, um, like, open and kind of big. So, like, you have a, uh, a direct path. You can go up, around, and over there, and into the exit. Or you can go kind of to the, the left, the right, and kind of explore stuff there. I think I also have a... Oh, I don't actually have a mob wall on this one. So this one does not have a mob wall. So that's fine. And then the last panic one that I've made, and I could keep making these if I wanted to, just different things. You uh, you start down here, and it's a fairly linear path. You just go up here, over here, down there, and then you're you're out, right? And this one actually has a bunch of pieces. Uh, if we select all of these that aren't end caps, 
Uh, this one is 20 pieces, for example. So it's double what a random generation would do. Um, and kind of like that. But there is one thing that I do want to show you guys because uh, it, it, it's been a problem for me. And that is in the random generation, the minimum number of tiles. So if we set this to be 30, for example, uh, it's now going to spawn 30 tiles instead of uh, 10 in order to try and make it, right? So if we hit play, we can go in and try and have a, you know, 30 area spawn. So come up to here, we hit that, we hit accept quest. Uh, one problem I was running into is on the larger number of tile rooms, it, it, it doesn't always work right first of all and i think if we come here we can see that uh oh we actually do have a panic spawn because it, it failed to create the, the higher number of tiles you have the more chance that you're going to get a, a panic state um also it's going to take a long time because it has to go through so much code to generate that and i'm definitely gonna have to prune the code or at least make it less intensive because one issue i was having was when you click accept quest and it went to spawn the level, it wouldn't bring up a loading screen until basically the entire level was spawned, which was a huge problem. Um, so let's just hit play and go again. And we'll try to actually see if we can get a, a random 30 level to generate without it being uh, a panic level. Also, one thing to note is when the loading screen is up, the game is frozen. Like, you can't do anything. Even in the Unity Editor, like, I had clicked up in the upper left right when the thing came up, um, and it did not do it until, like, that second there. So it looks like we're getting an actual level this time. So if we hit pause, we can come out to the scene viewer and come out here, and we see where we have an error, first of all. But uh, if we look at this, we can see it placed a bunch of tiles. Basically, all of them successfully placed except for the one right in the beginning which let's look at that tile shall we Oop. so this tile right here messed us up so if you look at the placed tile it says it's supposed to be placed up down but it has a rotation of 90 if i put that at zero we have that now the issue is that uh, it wasn't the random generator's fault, it's the fault of the prefabbed uh, piece here. And it's that it was rotated 90 degrees um, while being up down. It should have been a left right placement basically. So if we do that, we then have this nice long random level that goes twisty and turny all the way up to there. And yeah, so if we actually hit uh, play. You can also, it, it, the one thing I wanted to show y'all was how long it took to actually generate that level, the loading screen thing. And uh, yeah, it's not such a big deal now since I have the loading screen up. But before, it was a huge issue because the loading screen wouldn't hit up. You would just hit accept quest and it would just freeze on the accept quest screen for like seconds without doing anything. It, it sucked. But now if we go to our paths and we look at our halls, so it's not this piece, not that one, not that one, it is this one. So if we look at this one, we can see this is the one that is rotated 90 degrees, but also says it's up and um, right. So we just want to check these boxes here, hit save, and now that one will actually be a left-right piece, and it won't be confused for a, an up-down piece here. I thought I had fixed all these before, but this is also what bug testing is about right here. So now if we were to generate another one, we could definitely see that happen. But that's all I have for today, everyone. I don't want to ramble too much, but uh, I am still having the, the artist who has made these lovely backgrounds and stuff here and made the, the fists and the fist attack and the... Um, monster animations. Right now they're working on finishing the slime animations, which uh, for the slimes uh, it's going to be a attack animation, which is going to replace that, that red X that shows up. Um, so rather than a red X, it's going to do like an attack. 
and when it gets hurt, it'll play like an att uh, a damage um, like indicator. Like it gets hurt, like it'll like flinch or something. And then when it dies, it'll turn into a puddle. And then the puddle I'm going to have remain on the ground to show that it, it died there, um, essentially. And then I'll animate all those together and whatnot. And that'll be the first uh, thing done. And then I also have, uh, as you had seen, when we had opened one of the uh, the loot things. I don't know if I have one here. No. But when we opened one of the loot things, uh, like what looked like shotgun shells fell out. And that's because I was... Uh, using those as a placeholder for now, but uh, a mana potion should have been there instead. So they're also going to make for me some mana potion, health potions, armor, that kind of stuff that I can add into the level. Along with, um, you may have seen the white background purple item that dropped from monsters, the monster cores, which are kind of the currency, essentially. Um, they're going to be making one of those for me as well. Those are just placeholders for right now. Pretty much anything that looks bad is a placeholder until I get new textures. But I have like a, a long list of, if we look at my needed assets here, um, I have a bunch of monsters and uh, animations and stuff that I, I have here that uh, needs to be done. Yeah. So, uh, I'm getting an actual receptionist, because that receptionist you see there, uh, that's actually a, a, an adventurer that I made for, uh, just to see how this artist worked, and they, they did great work on animating the adventurer there. Uh, her name is Jura, one of my other characters. Uh, I'm gonna have one of my other characters named Streya run the actual receptionist table, so I'll have to get her animated, and then I can put her in place and move Jura somewhere else with some extra dialogue. Um, then we have, to finish up the forest level, uh, we're going to get a, a horn rabbit, a rabbit with like a horn, that uh, is going to be an enemy. We're going to have a boar, a wolf, and then for a boss, we're going to have a, a king slime enemy. Basically a huge slime that has more attacks and whatnot like that. And we also need to get, like I said, a mana potion, health potion, armor, monster core, and then a treasure chest as well uh, is what I want. And then I also want to get at least a pistol so I can use some ranged weapons to see how stuff goes. And that's going to come with the idle and a shooting animation, essentially. We're not, we're not going to reload. We're going to stay in this lore of this universe with the uh, the magic, with the uh, the gun mancy. Um, rather than having to reload, uh, you use the mana to spawn a bullet in the gun. And when you pull the trigger, it fires. That's how it that's how it's gonna work. So we don't have to worry about reloading animations and whatnot, and that'd just be extra stuff there. We also have um kind of like hit animations. As you would see when I punched something and it did damage, it had those like red particles that came off the enemy. Um those are just kind of built into Unity right now. So I want something of my own, so I'm also gonna have him do like a a blood splatter texture that's gonna, you know come up whenever you shoot or or hit something and uh, it's gonna do that i'm gonna get that in a couple different colors like red green blue gray yellow like different color blood for for different things like uh, slimes will be green obviously and then if it's a wolf or something it'll be red um just kind of like that right so that's kind of the plan that's everything that i have that i need to get done to finish the first level of the game now when I am done with this first level and I get it to be somewhat presentable, um, what I'm thinking I'm going to have to do is set up a Kickstarter for the game to kind of get people interested and to fund it. Because right now, um, I kind of did some estimations. Uh, and if I pull up the estimations here on my thing. So the weapon animations, uh, at least the fists so far, they're about $70 each for the, the two animations, or not even two animations, I'm sorry, for each animation. So for like the, the idle and then punching, that's two animations. So that's, uh, I think, uh, Jesus Christ, that's $140 for just the, the fist animation. And I have a bunch of different things, so I think that's gonna equal out to $420 for the, the weapons that I need to get animated. Then there's the, the backgrounds. 
um, and stuff like that, which is the um, like forest trees and the grass and stuff and all those assets. Um, for each level, I think it's going to be $250 roughly. And in total, I'm going to need uh, $1,750 for those. I also have extra objects that I'm not even sure about. That's stuff like treasure chests or um, mana potions, just extra little clutter items that you know, I might decide to add in to add more detail to the game, which I do not know how much those are going to cost, so I just put that on as unknown cost right now. Now, the music that I have, it's going to be roughly $50 per two minutes of a song, and I want to have six, at least, two-minute songs, so that's going to be $300 there, um, going off of that. And then for the like monster animations and character animations and stuff like that, uh, it seems to be roughly $120 per animation. And each enemy or creature is going to have five animations each. So that's $600 per monster. And I have 31 monsters in total, which is $18,600 um, just for those. And then for things like the receptionist or for extra adventurers that I want to put into the tavern to kind of add life to it, those are also going to take an animation, and it's just going to be an idle animation. They're not going to move or anything like that, but they're $120 each. And right now I have probably $1,200 estimated for those. Um, so that brings the grand total of what I need to complete this project right now to $21,970. Um, and there is some extra stuff there as well, like sound effects. I haven't even figured into this for like punching and attacking and monsters dying and stuff like that, which is probably going to be a pretty penny as well. Um, uh, various different like uh, effects, like fireballs going off and the enemy attacks that will be ranged, because they're not all going to be melee. There are going to be some like ranged attacks going on as well, um, like fireballs or other spells. Um, lasers and stuff like that, whatever. That's all going to have to be uh, animated or at least an asset made for it. And then I'll have to figure out how to do it. It's going to be a higher, higher budget. And right now I do not have that money available. So one of two things is going to have to happen. Either I, I get a Kickstarter, get it funded to the point where I can continue working on the game without worry, or I'm going to have to shelve the game get myself an actual job, and then, in my spare time, I can continue making the game, which is just going to delay development and everything like that. So right now I have probably a year's worth of time where I can just dedicate to the game and getting assets made and coding and whatnot, but at that time my personal funds are going to be running low, so I won't be able to do a great deal more, so... Once I do get the game to look somewhat presentable, I'm going to, like I had said, throw up a Kickstarter, put information about the game, um, kind of show some gameplay, that kind of stuff, and then uh, open it up, give kind of a detailed breakdown of what I think I'm going to need for funds, and explain that if we, you know, meet the goal or go past it, uh, I will add some extra stuff like the town exterior that I had mentioned with the, the rooms you can buy and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, and then I think uh, I've just been brainstorming some things for Kickstarter, but I was thinking like um, for like if someone pays $500 themselves, I could get them a character in the game like in a tavern. They could be like a, an NPC in a tavern that would say something right. Um, just do some kind of like that to, to get back. And then anyone who gives over the price of the game that I'm going to list it on scene for, they get a free copy, obviously, right? Just kind of stuff like that. And then, you know, anyone else like who reaches a certain milestone gets their name in the credits as a supporter, all that good jazz. But uh, that'll be flushed out once we actually get to that point. I don't know when I would be adding a Kickstarter or whatnot, but that's just going to be how it is. So if you do want to contribute to that, I will be making a video about it. Um, talking about the Kickstarter in the future. If I decide to go that route, we'll see how it goes. But look out for that. I don't know when it's going to be. It might be, you know, months from now. It might be a year from now. Who knows? 
I'm just doing this little uh, gameplay update for you guys who might be curious about the game since you saw the, the random generation. And I actually had a little bit more to show now that I had some proper backgrounds and stuff to show. Um, the actual next development update, um, it might not be until I actually have like a boss fight ready to go or a actual like main story quest line or at least a new like level, right? Like rather than a forest level, have the cave level, for example, going on, right? But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. For now, everyone, thank you all for watching, listening. Let me know if you have any questions, or uh, like I had said, if you think that the backgrounds for the user interface, for like the settings and stuff, looked okay, or if I should actually, you know, hire someone to do proper ones, or all that good jazz. Um, but yeah, until next time, everyone, I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.